from our group, inshaAllah, mashaAllah the <coughs> immense, immense Mawlid the Nabi after 10 years of the milad in, in Vancouver when we first started few of our Naqshbandis with a lot of strangers open to the community. This year was a lot of Naqshbandis with a few strangers. So this was an immense occasion that the people whom heard the call and they came. That from wherever they were, from wherever part of the world they were in, that they heard the call to come and celebrate with us. They had the ability that Allah opened for them through their airplanes, their tickets, their rooms, their cars, all of what they put into that, Allah inshaAllah reward them and nothing in Allah's way is wasted. Allah give a million times in ways that nobody could imagine. And that's the immensity that uh, once or twice a year for people to come and show the immensity of their love with all of the SMC logos, the holy turbans, the beards, the sunnah and outside communities that were attending, I think they were more in shock that where all these Naqshbandis came from and where all these faces from different nationalities. It's not just one nation, one group of people but Jamil Nas, the gathering of mankind for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they get to witness the miracle. And this, this is a, I think was an amazing, amazing year in which people came and the people whom witness it then they could see that the love of Prophet and the real love of Sayyidina Muhammad brings this miracle that uh, it breaks down all barriers, all nationalities, all differences. They become nothing in the presence of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad in which mankind will enter in Islam in droves coming because of that reality and the blessings of La ilaha illallah and the power and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah inshaAllah. So alhamdulillah for all those who came, all those who wanted to come, all those whom supported for these events to happen, alhamdulillah inshaAllah next year even grander inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What do we got from uh, our online SMC family, inshaAllah? As alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Is feeling helpless normal in tariqah? Helpless? I don't know if helpless uh, that we're in an ocean of Allah's might and majesty can be helpless but not hopeless. Helpless is that Allah's might and majesty we're a big fish in small pond but in Allah's presence you're a small fish in a huge ocean. So it can be overwhelming for people. Now if you're doing the meditation, tafakkur and the energy or you just came new and just asked that question is different. If you're new and asked that question then welcome to you, you're a small fish in a big ocean. If you're already existing student then you should have your meditation book, your taweezes, your practices, all of those realities and practices. and should be well acquainted with this reality inshaAllah.
السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت الله When Sayyidina Musa السلام, returned from the divine fire was he embraced by his community or were they agitated by the fire that was now in him I think uh, his community has always been agitated by his life <laughs> that's why they always argued with him السلام, but definitely the And we have talks on that on the energy book. Anytime you do light practices, energy practices, people's devils become agitated. So this should be something obvious. You put on an energy charge and you go near rats, what happens? Do you, do you think they welcome you? No, so some of these things you have to have sort of an obvious understanding that the, the bad energy are like rats and you come with a positive energy, Divinely lights and you put that down towards these creatures, they're not going to be happy and come up and, and try to embrace you. It agitates bad things, it agitates devils, it agitates rats, it agitates everything because they like stinky, dirty, unpleasant environment. Anything that comes with the light of heaven and the fragrances of heavens, of course they're not happy. The only people happy are the inhabitants of heaven. <clears throat> so heavenly practices will attract heavenly beings, they're happy with you. Dunya, no they're, they, they don't like anything except the filth of dunya. <clears throat> Go do something horrible and filthy and dirty and all dunya people happy with you. <clears throat> as soon as you do something heavenly then dunya people become angered by you and with <clears throat> because of the energy. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. I recently reviewed the video of the levels of the heart. When the struggle intensifies and we feel weak, keeping failing, does it stop us from moving forward and back to step one? Does what stop the person to fall back? <clears throat> When they practice what they can practice, they try to improve themselves. If they can't improve themselves then they stuck at that level in which they have to work hard to struggle against that. If they fall backwards then they fall backwards and then they keep re-struggling to improve themselves. So it's like a ladder, if you went up five steps and you saw the blue window or yellow window And then you say, well I took a break, I came down, I went jogging, I went here, I went there, I did this, am I going to still be at that yellow window? No, you have to get on the ladder, go back up. So you have to continuously practice, continuously try to achieve and try not to fall down. You can take a break but if you didn't fall from that then you re connect and re-establish your connection and your practices. So everything is a, is a continuous movement, as if you exercise and then don't exercise for two months you can't use the same level of weights because the muscles have to be built, they have to be continuously developed. So there's no difference in spirituality, you have to continuously develop the connection. If you leave the connection All of the darkness of dunya rebuilds itself upon the person. It, it calcifies the individual with dirtiness of dunya. So every time we make the connection and energy comes, burns away all the dirtiness and brings all sorts of clarity and energy, it's like not showering for a week, then two weeks, then three weeks. Are you as clean as when you did shower because you showered once? No. So every week you're going to shower, every two days you're going to shower. Some people shower every day. 
just keep a, a state of cleanliness. So these are all like analogies for us to understand, if we don't use it we lose it. So we have to continuously build the system otherwise the darkness doesn't go away and the difficulties don't go away. Every day there's more negative energies being thrown upon us, on our heart, on our eyes, on our entire being. If we don't connect to burn it off, does the next day mean it's easier? No, it became harder. The harder you… The, the longer you stay away from it, the harder it becomes. So when your boat is anchored to the island, you just jump off and come onto the island. But shaitan plays with you and says, no you don't have to be anchored, you don't have to be that close, don't worry about it. You can go five miles off of the sea, don't worry you can still see the island. But now try to jump off your boat and come to the island five miles away. You'll drown at sea means you're too far now, it's going to be very difficult for you to approach. And that's how shaitan plays with people. So keep yourself close. Anchored in, email, communicate, practice so that the connection is strong, the practices are strong. It's only going to get more difficult in this dunya, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi we were watching Yunus Emery. And uh, we're wondering, are the seven sleepers related to the seven names that govern us? Were the seven one? Seven sleepers? <coughs> they have a reality in the levels of the heart, but not the reality of your seven names. So everything has a, has a, interconnectivity. But more, most important is that to make the connection, build the muraqabah and make the connection with the shaykh, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa does the West Coast have higher demonic activities than the rest of North America? I don't know if it's higher demonic activity but it has a much more significant demonic activity because of Hollywood. This is their media headquarters. <clears throat> So this is where they propagate their belief system. So they have pretty nefarious activities. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not the reality of Disneyland. So these are all the, the illusions that shaitan puts upon people. So the, their, their base of propagation in which to spread their belief system and uh, disbelief across the earth. So most definitely it has a, an immense reality, inshaAllah that Allah has a counter for that inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I'm confused about the reality of Sayyidina Musa Salam being very dark skinned and how his nation today isn't that. Please forgive me. Why <laughs> are you confused? Are you from the nation of <laughs> Sayyidina Musa Salam? Yeah, that's the whole thing that's on the internet that the, the nation of Sayyidina Musa Salam very, very dark skinned. And they were all dark skinned until a, a group of European people accepted the religion and they 
became the head of that religion. So the Sephardic race which are the original nation are dark skinned. And I think they, they have traditions within Ethiopia as they said was a lost tribe but probably more of the original tribes. Then the Europeans took it over, took control of it and basically claimed it as theirs. Hence the European image that you have of, of uh, Nabi Musa said, I'm from Hollywood, blonde and super built and big and this is only from Hollywood's uh, understanding. But uh, very dark skinned and uh, most of the Prophets of Bani Israel were dark skinned. Queen of Sheba and Sayyidina Sulaiman and Queen Sheba was uh, uh, if Sheba was from I think was it Eritrea or Ethiopia. So no that was the history that's why we said now nothing in this life of ours is correct. Everything we think we know we have to unknow because his story. So whoever his was he made a story and then if he had a camera and a radio he made his story even more believable. So whoever has a camera and radio can control the hearts and minds of people but it doesn't acknowledge the true history of mankind. So this is, this is the condition on this earth is that everything is, is somebody's version, whose version but it's not necessarily heaven's version. So even they have an organization called the who and it has nothing to do with who. Right, it has to do with Pharaoh. So these are these are the the life in which we live. This life is but a deception and deceit. When Prophet gave to us that wait for Dajjal, means what? We would be living in a time of great deceit because a person of deception doesn't just appear, and everybody would be shocked. Oh, what is this? This is deceiving. But we're so engulfed and so surrounded by deceit, people don't even know it's deception anymore. That's the extent of how bad the deception is, is that people don't even know they're being deceived. They're confused about the earth is flat or round, they're confused about their color, they're confused about their origin, they're confused about uh, history. Was there electricity before? Some people say there was and other civilizations had it. There was energies and realities. The pyramids definitely were not tombs, they were power plants. They weren't put across the earth in elaborate structures to bury one person and that one person couldn't have even built that structure. So it means other technologies were used, other realities were used to build these things. So the true history of the earth we don't know, not through their books but those whom open their heart and communicate with their heart Allah will reveal in their heart from heavenly truths. And that's what we said that uh, why are not people trying to connect with their heart and their consciousness? so that they can talk and understand and learn from the speed of thought. That these other creatures that's how they're communicating. So it means the consciousness has to be developed, the connections have to be developed so that to traverse the great deception upon this earth and it gets worse and worse and worse. Said for, for Non-Muslims look at all of the deception that they live on a daily basis. Their holidays are not holy. When you want to know a, a heavenly religion every event for us has to do with immense realities of the heavens. 
Look, we celebrated the birth of Prophet Later we'll have Isra wa Miraj, a voyage into the heavens. Later we'll have a Ramadan, we're fasting for the heavens and to glorify the holy book of the heavens. What do other people have? They run in a backyard looking for eggs from a rabbit when a rabbit doesn't even lay eggs. So means it's built on deception so the people will become angered or you know icons from Coca-Cola that they think they're holy. So all of these things are, are pointing to people to wake up that whatever you've been doing was a great deception. Come to Islam and to this way of purity in which every celebration is a celebration of the heavens. Everything is of a clean nature, of a blessed nature, no deception, no deceit, no lies, no falsehoods for the sake of entertaining children. They don't care to entertain the children, we have to make sure that God is happy with us, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah From a previous talk Sayyidi we learned that Sifat al Basira is in the ears, why is it not in the eyes? I gave the whole talk the night before or weren't you there? When was that Saturday night? Sami al Basir, right? How, how could you see if you don't hear? So it's not about seeing. The lataifs are not, not a, about seeing, so it means that you want to open up the quality of sight. Real sight has to do with the spiritual power of hearing. That's why a Sami comes first, Samina Watana. We're a nation in which we hear and we obey. Saturday night I think we gave very big detail on the holy face. Go back to these talks, write down the notes from the talks. That's why I said the details that are coming out now is not something somebody just listens to in the gym while they're on a jogging machine, say it was great talk shape. You can go jog, that's not the issue but that's not when to take your realities. You have to be in wudu, you have to be sitting with a pen and paper, you turn on the sobat with wudu and asking for madad and begin to document and take notes. As if you're in the presence of Prophet in presence of awliyaullah so that the fires and the dress can reach to the person. So it means to have an adab in how to receive these treasures from the heart of Prophet it's not like you're picking up some change from somewhere and say, okay yeah give me some change and I'll put it in my pocket. You're asking to receive the, the treasures from the heart of Prophet So with it comes an adab and a mannerism. So when they write and they go back to read the writing they'll understand. This whole way is based on opening the head but the head doesn't open until the heart is in submission. So it means everything is all interlocked. So as soon as you come to the path what's the most important thing to open? Your ears, not your eyes and sit, just close your eyes but you don't ever listen to the shaykh, you don't listen to the talks. Uh, he may ask you something and you do something completely different, means you, there's a listening problem. Many times shaykh will ask you, do one, two, three, four, five, six. They actually come back and put seven, eight, nine, ten. They did completely their own way. So, but that's not what I asked. But that just shows people have an inability to hear and truly do what they've heard. But they do what they want to do, they hear what they want to hear. So that means what? It's just not easy, that's not something easy. So after years of training of Samina Watana, Samina Watana because you get crushed, you get crushed, you get crushed until your ears hear only your teacher 
And you knew that it was so sensitive that I could not hear anyone else, otherwise it would throw off my connection. So I hear only my teacher, I hear only my teacher, that's why they don't go around hearing every talk and what did this one say, what did that one say, because then it would, it would infiltrate my ear and contaminate my ears. So I found my teacher, found my Mawlana and that was it. And through that training and accompanying then continuous pounding in life in which to hear and obey, hear and obey, hear and obey. So that what Allah would open sincerity in the hearing. If Allah opens sincerity in the hearing, Samina Watana, that the servant their ears are clean. They don't listen to outside and they try their best with sincerity to fulfill their understanding and the knowledge is coming into their ears. There are people whom hear the teachings and implement them. They hear the reality and implement it. Why? Then Allah grants sincerity. Whom Allah grants sincerity and hearing what happens? They close their eyes, Allah opens their vision. Why? Because the lock on the ear shaitan put a lock. Shaitan with sheen has three locks. So when shaitan locks you he has three, one is going to be your ears. If he got your ears means he talks to you all day long. That's why don't let people complain to you because shaitan seeing if he can get into your ears. Don't listen to people's complaints, say, go, go talk to the wall, I don't want to hear it. My ears are not for, for shaitan because that person's shaitan is now coming to defecate within your ears. Your ears are supposed to be clean in which you hear your salawats, you hear your guidance, you hear your shaykh. So that Allah will open your higher level consciousness when the ears are clean, so you keep them clean. And as a result they begin to tafakkur and contemplate, Allah opens their spiritual vision. So Sami and Basir are linked. And on the throne it's like two side arms because the face also represents the throne of God. And on a chair you have the tongue of the chair, the seat which you sit. So they become an immense support. These are a very important reality to open up that reality of the holy face, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.